If you've watched all the videos leading up to this point, you've heard us use the word extension dozens of times. We've given at least a partial definition in previous modules, but before now, we haven't spent much time talking about how extensions work. That's about to change. Extensions live in context, and together, extension at context defines the dial plan address that Asterisk needs in order to route calls. Extensions in Asterisk aren't quite the same as extensions in traditional PBX systems, in that they don't represent a physical port or phone on the PBX. In Asterisk, an extension is just the mapping between a dial plan address and a name set of actions, things done on or to an Asterisk channel. Each extension has to have a name. There are several special or reserved extension names which we'll discuss later, but generally you have a lot of freedom when naming your extensions. Because most traditional phones have keypads that include only the digits 0 through 9 and star and pound signs, it's common to name your extensions using only those 12 characters. But this isn't a requirement with an asterisk, and you're welcome to use alpha characters in your extension names as well. Many modern VoIP phones allow you to type the address you wish to dial, and external programs or scripts that initiate calls are of course not constrained to using the same limited 12 character set that classic telephones offer. The syntax for defining an extension may at first look cumbersome, but it's actually quite simple. The letters EXTEN appear first, followed by the equals greater than operator to indicate that we're defining an extension. Next comes the extension name and a comma. Next is the dial plan priority, which tells Asterisk in what order to execute the actions for this extension. This is followed by another comma, and then the dial plan application name. Any parameters to the application are listed in parentheses and separated by commas. By convention, we leave a space on either side of the equals greater than and do not put spaces between the name and priority, or priority and application. In fact, spaces can cause problems in the priority and application labels, so you want to avoid them there. It's typical for a single named extension to have more than one action associated with it. Remember that asterisk style plan applications are executed sequentially, one at a time, until the call is hung up. We can chain together multiple actions on a call by repeating the previous line and changing just the priority and application fields. Applications are executed in priority order, so even if these lines were listed in reverse order in extensions.conf, as long as the priorities don't change, the hello world file will be played first, the goodbye file would be played second, and then the call would be hung up. There's no rule that says all the priorities for a given extension must be listed near each other in the dial plan, but it's convention to do so to maximize readability. Of course, different priorities for the same extension must be in the same context, or asterisk won't associate them with each other. When you have one extension with several different priorities, it can be a little tedious to type or to copy each priority separately, especially when you're updating the extension name. In asterisk 1.8, there's a sort of shorthand that simplifies this. You can replace the extend equals greater than extension name part of the line with same equals greater than, and have the line use the same extension name as the line immediately preceding it. The priority, application, and application arguments still have to be listed separately, but those are the parts that change anyway. We've only really begun to scratch the surface of what the asterisk dial plan is capable of. Entire chapters later in the course are devoted to more advanced dial plan constructs, but learning the basic syntax is necessary first. From here, we'll move on to a more thorough discussion of dial plan priorities.